You know, back in the first century when the early Christians were just trying to figure out how to, how, to, how to organize their lives around this event in history that they had witnessed. See, they had been with Jesus. They'd seen him die. They'd seen him buried in a tomb nearby. And then they watched him walk out of that tomb, and they had breakfast with him the next day. They had seen him alive, and they're wondering, what does this mean? What are the implications for my life? How do we organize this new community around this truth? And see, they came out of a community that said, hey, here's how you get right with God. You got rules. You got rituals to follow. There were over 600 of them. You stay pure. You stay away from things that are impure. And you get right with God by the things that you do. And then Jesus came along and he said, oh, no, no, not anymore. You don't get right by what you do. You don't get right with God by what you do. You get right with God by believing and trusting in me and what I have done for you. And so now instead of 600 warning lights on their dashboards, Jesus says, no, we only have one rule. Love the way I have loved you. And so the early church, they were trying to figure this out. They were struggling around, trying to figure out, and they just got it wrong a lot of times. And so the Apostle Paul comes in, and he, he writes a letter to one of these struggling churches. It's the book of 1 Corinthians in your Bible. And he spends about 12 chapters telling them how they've got it wrong, about how they've messed up their church services and what they've taught, and they've messed it up morally and all that kind of stuff. And then he comes to a point in his letter where he makes a transitional statement. I'll read it to you. He says this. He says, but now let me show you a way of life that's best of all. In other words, he says, let's cut through the details. Let's, let's talk about what really matters. And then Paul goes on to write what has become one of the most famous chapters in all of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13. He says, if I could speak all the languages on earth and of angels, but I didn't love other people, I'd just be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, if I understood all God's secret plans, if I possessed all knowledge, if I had such faith that I could move mountains, that's a lot. But I didn't love others, I'd be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor, if I even sacrificed my own body, you can't give any more than that. I can boast about that, but if I didn't love others, I gained nothing. Paul says, everything that we typically use to measure our level of growth and maturity as Christians, it's worthless if it does not lead to love. It's nothing. He even goes on. Look at this next verse. He says, look, when I was a child, I spoke, I thought, I reasoned like a child. But now that I'm grown up, he says, I'm putting the childish things behind me. In other words, he's saying, if you want to be mature, if you want to grow into a spiritual adult, this is the way. Not all the religious trappings that we use to make ourselves feel righteous and soothe our conscience. No. Jesus said, I only have one commandment. You ask this question, what does love require of me? And just do that. Because with that, nothing else ma- without that, nothing else matters. But with that, you can fulfill everything that God requires of you.